Hello and welcome to the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex. We are here for Thursday night football in the land of wood and water. The Ray Nevue Jamaica Premier League takes another turn with what is called El Clasico in Jamaica. Arnett Gardens at home to Waterhouse. We anticipate this one to be a wild one, a really good one. And uh, all eyes will be on the stars of the moment in just a few minutes time. But first, let's hear from the coaching staff of these two teams. It has been a, a mixed bag of results and performance for you this season. Um, tell me, what do you put that down to? I um, mean, in, inconsistency. Um, but I mean, we've been working. Um, we want to definitely put on a good showing again tonight. Um, I think the last game we, we, we did much better than the one before. Um, and it's important the way we start, and we want to start on a positive note in, in, in terms of the first stanza of the game. And we hope that we can come out and execute tonight. It's not going to be easy. A good form. They have been doing well. And um, they want revenge. You know, I think we beat them late in the preseason. Um, so they're going to come back for us, but um, hopefully that both teams can, can, can entertain the fans tonight. In terms of, you, you talk about how big this rivalry is. It's probably the second only to your rivalry with Tivoli Gardens. I mean, what would have been your main focus coming into this game? Um, to see if we can get something out of the game, that's the main focus. Um, and give a good performance. Um, try to nullify their strengths. Um, because definitely I've been, they've been, they, they hit, they're hitting some good notes now at this point in time. Um, getting some good results and, and doing well. So uh, we have to acknowledge that, understand that, and just come out and be smart in terms of our approach. I'm mean, talking about them having some good results. They're the joint, but well, probably the top scorers in this league, and they do have the top scorer in the league as well. Anything specific uh, for Brian tonight and their attacking thrust? Um, of course, we definitely have to see how best we can keep them out. Um, nullify. Um, the ball gets into him because we know the league can be especially in and around the box and we want to, to, to curtail that and hopefully it will work for us tonight. Coach, a really decent start to the season, not something unfamiliar to you. But tell me if you're seeing anything amongst this set of players that may tell you that this, this set of players can go all the way. Still have, still have time, still, still early season. Um, you know, but we're getting some things right. I, I just discussed a while ago. Our first game, we, we lost 3-0. But we see sign from there coming, coming, um, coming, into the, coming inside. In terms of today, you're up against Arnett Gardens. Always a big rival game, an intense game. Uh, for the fans here, the young ones here and those in TV land, just tell us why this fixture is always so intense and big for Waterhouse and Arnett Gardens. The words and the adjective won't come so easily because it's a... It's a it's a history. It's a it's a home thing. Anywhere anywhere it go, it's a cross town derby. I mean, it's a dub El Clasico of local football, and you know it's a fun treat. And not nothing different tonight. We come here to entertain the crowd tonight, and we come to hope to play good football. And, and they're they on a better end tonight. You talk about what you have to do tonight: good football, entertain. What are you anticipating from Arnett Gardens tonight? Tactics and approach to this one. Um, the, are a garden of all. I mean, they, they won't change um, their way of play. They're very aggressive um, going forward, and, and, and we know that, you know. We, we, we can't um, sleep on, on our laurels tonight. We have to be, be in our A games, because, you know, if we, any mistake has to be the back, we can pay for it. So, um, you know, hopefully our guys are, are focused um, fully today. We can go there and execute from start. The last three games, these these two have played in favor of Arnett Gardens 1-0, 2-0, 4-2. In the previous 14 games, Arnett Gardens were unable to secure victory. So it's one streak after another. Maybe it won't be as long as Arnett's winless streak before their last three games. Wherever you're watching all over the world, thank you so much for joining our coverage here on the home of champions on scene TV in the diaspora. My name is Donald Oliver. With me is Dwight Jeremiah. We're very much looking forward to this. I'm very much looking forward to it. Waterhouse, Arnett Gardens is always a colossal encounter. And tonight the expectancy is no different. The likes of Javon Bryan, Nicole Christian, Andre Fletcher are just to name a few of those players who you feel are looking to shine as bright as these floodlamps here tonight. For Arnett Gardens, Kimani Arboin, Shea Smith, 
are ones looking, aiming to get their names up in light. It's a big one. It's a marquee encounter in Jamaica, in club competition, in the Ray Nevue Jamaica Premier League. Fan bases so hyped about football in their communities. Arnett Gardens entertaining this one tonight. The junglists at home to Waterhouse. We expect a lot Ladies when these two teams meet. For the we now pause for the playing of the national anthem. anthem. Well, this is the first edition of Thursday Night Football this season. And uh, you hope, you think, with the anticipation, will come the actuality of a really good football game. And it will not be better than this if it lives up to the hype and the potential. Certainly has the hype. Not a packed Anthony Sporting Sports Complex, which is a little bit disappointing. But it Hamilton is the one in charge of tonight's encounter. Stephanie Dale Yi Singh and Rickton Archer will assist her. Carvel Banton is the fourth official. The officials for today's game, with the referee on it, Hamilton. She'll be assisted by the FIFA assisted referee, Stephanie Dale Yi Singh, Rickton Archer. And the fourth official, the fourth referee, Stephen Dwyer. The home team's lineup, Eric Edwards between the sticks, Shane Watson is uh, at left back, Gerald Neal, Joel Cunningham, the captain in the middle there. On the right hand side, Rashawn Amos in the middle of the park, Marlon Martin, Jamon Shepherd, and Jaheim Thomas. And up top, Shea Smith on the left. He scored a double over Montague Bay United last time out. And Kimani Arboin with four goals on the right. Warner Brown with just the one goal beside his name will go through the middle. Yeah, 4 3 3. Marlon Martin will provide the base for the attacking thrust from Kimani Arboin, Warner Brown, and Shea Smith. Uh, those will be the main protagonists for Arnett Gardens looking to get the win here over Waterhouse. Kemar Foster in goal for Waterhouse, a back four of Nevada Blair, Keith Simpson, Elvis Wilson, and Kenny Hyde, very familiar in the middle of the park. Nikoi Christian, Devontae Walker, and possibly Denada Thomas playing centrally tonight. And up top, Andre Smith on the left, Andre Fletcher on the right, and the big man, their number nine, Javain Bryan, with six goals to his name so far this season. Well, the three names, Javain Bryan, Nikoi Christian, and Andre Fletcher, we expect him to really pull the strings and get the finishing touches here if Waterhouse is going to get the victory they've come here for, so echoed by their coach, Marcel Gale. I can't wait for this one. Don't have to wait any longer. Arnett Gardens with the kickoff. Waterhouse, they get it immediately. How will this story play out? Usually with the anticipation, teams sometimes go in their shell. We hope that's not the case tonight because as we said, the expectancy is the high 
remains the same and they're expecting to see really good football intense football hopefully that does not overtake and smother quality ball launched lovely turn by warner brown runs into some traffic there that seemed to have been javain brown yeah he's the one that marshall gale says he's wanting not to get the ball too close to goal christian launching that one long Xavier Gilbert, the man Gilbert, on the sidelines for Arnett Gardens. Brian trying to get that one across. And there's a bit of a stretch there. And it's going to be a corner kick. They couldn't keep it in play. Marcel Gale is a man in charge at Waterhouse. mind fully on tonight has another big match tomorrow which will be televised st george's college up against mona in the manning cup semi you get the feeling he's not thinking about that right no, now not at all he's wondering if brian can get on the end of something for him here corner kick coming in at the near post here's an opportunity oh it's wide of the mark what a chance that is andre, andre smith came yeah. roaring in there and blasted that one there was a deflection and it's a corner kick towards the house. That was a big chance. Was it initially on target? We'll see here. I think it was, you know. I think it yeah, was. Yeah. It takes some doing to get past the three defenders, but it was certainly on target. Andre Fletcher with the corner kick. Here it comes at the near post, headed away. Again, not the most convincing clearance, but Arnett Gardens trying to get out of their own half and can't do so. They are pinned back. Fletcher again. Fletcher. Anticlimactic there, but yeah, Waterhouse on the front foot, and already we're seeing some of their main players showing that they have turned up for this one. Fletcher now just blasting high. Smith earlier seen his shot deflected wide. Cunningham, the captain, looking for one of those telling passes intercepted and Waterhouse will come again Fletcher can you hide Fletcher again with a little space to operate in knock into the space Devonte Walker keeps his balance trying to get it across it's another corner kick to Waterhouse yeah, Amos stayed with the, the, the duty he had there. Stuck with it until he smothered the danger and give his team a chance to regroup. Arnett Gardens, not unfamiliar to being put under pressure early. Did have to come from two goals down again, Sarberview. And did walk away with a point. Corner kick again. Not the best delivery inside, but... Wardhouse, they are so quick to retrieve again. Fletcher floats this one inside, headed away. Honey Gardens having a, a little difficulty in clearing their lines, and maybe they can break away now through Shea Smith. He'll have another chance. Can't get by a third defender. Now the play is switched, almost got through. Love the intensity with which this one has started, Donald. Just now we saw Waterhouse. It was seven players committed in attack. So you feel for Arnett Gardens, the transitional play, the attacking transitional play will be vital for them. But we see lacking a bit, quali bit of quality in terms of making the right pass or completing the pass, the intended passes. But you feel on the counter at least, based on what we've seen in the opening stages here, something that could work for Arnett Gardens.
Ball slipped out wide. And, uh, couldn't quite get on the end of that one. Gerald Neal. Who's playing on the right side of the defense tonight, which means that Amos, who is also used to playing at right back, is one of two center backs. It's not the first time we've seen them use uh, Neil outside. Well, it would be very much in the mold of his father, right? <laughs> yeah. Didn't take too long for him to morph into the right position or the position of his senior. Well, it seems as if Edwards wants to morph into another shoes, <laughs> another pair of shoes, and uh, just having some difficulty with that one. You need to be comfortable because, based on the intent from Waterhouse early on, looks like it's going to be a busy night for him unless his outfield players can change. <laughs> Mount Pleasant defeat in Tivoli Gardens earlier today. Uh, go to Neil Datman in the shots there. Kimani Bailey did score today again. Yeah, he, he just keeps scoring. Fourth of the season. By Grave next to him knows a thing or two about scoring as well. We see early that early chance for Waterhouse going wide there from Andre Smith. So Waterhouse will restart the play here. Arne Gardens fully resettled. Jamon Shepard launching that one wide. Smith does well to take it down. Gets Watson involved. He goes all the way back to his captain who will try and switch the play to Gerald Neal. Shepard. Looking for options is Shepard. Martin. Lovely stuff by Arne Gardens, just outside the area. Watson delivering across the face of goal. Waterhouse will clear. Christian on it. Knows how to shield it well and was harassed all the time <laughs> by Jamon <laughs> Shepard, who really tried to be a nuisance there. And I think Shepard is a little lucky to get away with. No card. Without being cautioned, cars yep. I think, I think a referee is also saying, Hamilton, that Christian was doing a bit of holding himself. Definitely not as much. Shepard here. Yeah, Christian holding on to the shorts. Yeah, lifting. <laughs> <laughs> he did lift him off the ground as well. So I take that back. As much as yeah. he was getting, he was giving. It, it was tit for tat. <laughs> yep, certainly. Not sure which was more, though, the tit or the tat. I tell you what, the one that came off the ground was getting more. <laughs> oh, this is a lucky bounce through. A chance for the guns. Can he settle? Oh, yes, he can. It's Warner Brown. And maybe the boy has become a man in this derby. His second goal this season. Warner Brown strikes for Arnett Gardens in the jungle over Waterhouse. Well, his first take in this game was always going to set him up for a goal. You knew what he was up to earlier when he took it and turned nicely. Here they're testing that it should have been a handball. I don't think so off the sleeve, but the finish was smart. And once he got around the defender who spent most time appealing rather than trying to really deflect that one from Brown, the finish across goal, emphatic, cool, calm. And yes, you can beat your chest and he would do as well, Warner Brown come back from some exploits overseas and really looking to set the league alight to get another move that will go a far way in helping 
but good finish there from Warner Brown and at first suspicion of handball and waved away because in truth there wasn't any and it would have been colossal to try and stop that one. Waterhouse trying to answer the call themselves and Neil does well and now they're playing ball sent in the center and now looking to make the transition Shepard couldn't get the through ball accurate enough and Keith Simpson does well and he brings in Andre Fletcher now Simpson continuing his run couldn't let it go back to Fletcher on the right just stuck on his feet there Keaty now Warner Brown looking for the long ball across the field wasn't successful Devontae Walker I like Walker as a player you know for for Waterhouse he's been really good the last couple of games Devontae Walker and he continues his run here looking waiting for support gets it in Keneal Hyde Hyde delivers inside and uh, no issues there for Eric Edwards Brian hasn't been able to get a touch in and around the box as yet with 12 minutes gone but you know top strikers like that and he's really a top striker at the moment they just need a moment as we saw with Warner Brown his first touch early in the game and made a lovely turn Adonal which you got you excited so not a surprise to see him break away as he did before completing that calm cool finish so often we see players get into his position and get excited hitting wide that was a good strikers finish from Warner Brown here they come again through Fletcher oh that was just a lot on it from Andre Fletcher not sure if he was in two minds there entertaining a shot as well in his thinking but he needs to be more involved and the Waterhouse fans they know it what a find he has been this season so far good to see the homegrown number nines really coming to the fore we saw Chavante last season from Mount Pleasant and running a move to Syria hmm. Nicholson scoring two goals for Jamaica against Canada did play in the Premier League as well the only player is still down maybe on it will put that in the touch well, the referee deciding to stop the play with Arne Gardens in possession and Neil will need some attention here yeah they were looking to play that one out they think they're going so well flying they could still go along with 10 players yeah I boot there just I think it's just above the knee <laughs> yeah just above <laughs> <laughs> well not 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 talking how high it is just just where he made contact with him just being specific with that probably the, the quad that he made contact with but both teams really contributing to a good sprightly start and it, a good watch it, you know what's interesting though because waters were dictating play you know, yeah and then there was a bit of stoppage instigated by Eric Edwards needing to change his shoes since then Waterhouse's momentum went dead and Anakans almost as if there was a reset to the game just started dominating the play you talk about having experienced players on there it could have been really a need for a change of boot but sometimes in games when you're under the coach you need just to break the momentum of the opponent whether deliberately or inadvertently it did break the momentum of this man's team Marcel Gale but he would know that there's a long way to go in this contest and he has enough match winners on the park least of all Devon Brown with six goals so far leading the contest or for the golden boot at the moment well here they are coming forward Waterhouse Christian sends it out wide Thomas in truth though for Waterhouse O'Donnell throughout the last four seasons they would have been 
among the favorites to win the title. Yes. Oh, lovely first touch, but the sliding challenge coming in. And it was well done. Elvis Wilson there. Yeah, they about its COVID season. They were, I think, in second position. Leading the table at the time themselves and Mount Pleasant up top there. And then in the COVID season, went to the finals with Cavalier. Lost. Got an early yellow card to their skipper in that game. And then red card, you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, red card, sorry. And then season before last, they were flying before Marcel Gale went to the call of his country and went away on national duties with the under-23s and the wheels seemed to have come off at that point. But a good start this season. Can they go all the way? But there's a lot of teams that will have a lot to say about it. And one of those teams is in front of them now who was the favorite at the end of the regular round last season, topping the tables on it, Gardens, and many felt they would have gone on to win it, but just snatched away by Mount Pleasant in the semi-final, who went on to win it. They were so consistent last year, Yeah, uh, Arnett Gardens, last season, I should say. And uh, we really thought that they would have gone all the way. One of the more consistent seasons I would have seen from Arnett Gardens, because we're used to seeing them finishing in the final playoff spot and winning everything else after that. Yeah, they've won this league five times in their history. Both sent across and Cunningham, or rather Watson, doing well. Nodding that one behind for another corner kick. Hanigan's looking for their... Fourth consecutive win. Fifth consecutive win over Waterhouse in the Jamaica Premier League. Here's the kick coming in, headed away. They'll try again to deliver. Again, some stubborn defending, this time from Arboyne, who has been quiet in the attacking third but doing his job at the moment swung in and away and into touch uh, difficult for Fletcher to get to that one always running away from him at some point you do expect him to have something to say in this contest Edwards goes long. Sometimes I get the impression that these two teams are, are moody teams. <laughs> like if conditions aren't right or 100%. And I can see why you're saying that too, because you look at our Arnett Gardens tonight and how they're going, and against Tivoli Gardens here, really didn't look the part. Mm -hmm. Lost that one by three goals to one. And, and can they pull themselves out of adversity? Yellow card's there. Yellow card there for the tug on Christian. Christian, has, <laughs> Christian has had enough of... <laughs> 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 yeah, Gerald Neal there clearly feeling that he cannot allow Christian to go forward. It is his uh, flank that he had vacated his position, so he didn't want them to attack there. So he'll tell you that he took one for the team, but there was cover there, so no need for that, I think. If a Gilbert, they're not pleased. Waterhouse supporter with the Dutch cover here. He's still winning his team on. They wouldn't want to see Gerald Neal staying down for so long. They Although they do have Rashawn Amos who can play along the right side of defense and this doesn't look good for Neil. A bit of stretching taking place. DeAndre Cunningham isn't available because he has a, a terrible flu. Yeah. I think what you spoke about earlier, Marcel Gale lamenting on the sideline. Maybe the long stoppages hurting his team. Maybe he's recognizing there. He's talking to the fourth official. 
just to say to them, you know, it took a long time for him to come off the park. And he's and going, he's going down the tunnel. the tunnel. Yeah, so it seems like his night is done. Hmm. Well, he's sitting in the tunnel. Well, so we'll wait and see. Waterhouse will try to capitalize here because on the guns, they are a man short. And looking to make a sub, it seems, yeah. Seems to be Chinoy Evans that may be waking it, making his way in. Yeah, he can also play in the right back position. Mm -hmm. A utility player for the junglers. Also plays in the holding midfield area as well. Evans. played forward and just a slip there the momentum not quite gone for any garden this one is played through and an opportunity save made by Foster Shepard trying to win it and uh, a couple of Waterhouse defenders back there making sure that nothing came came of it yeah, let's have a look here again Thomas. just a toe poke there so he could have afforded, or was afforded. That's a good save by Foster. Yeah, because it would have come with him very quickly. That's what you get from a topo. Thomas was close to getting his second of the season as well. Throw in, it's a long one. Brown, Shepard, Thomas! Oh, that proved to be a little awkward here. And the clearance had to be made quickly by Elvis Wilson. Thomas needs to be a little bit more involved in the game for Waterhouse, I think. Keneal Hyde. Fletcher again. Smith. It's now come centrally now. And Donata Thomas is out on that left hand side. Couldn't control that one though. Oh, they've given it up. And Fletcher is there. Trying to send it back out wide. Wasn't the wisest choice, I don't think. An opportunity now for Shepard. Shepard on his left, driving forward. Goes down. No reaction from referee Odette Hamilton. And now Waterhouse trying to break free. Fletcher gets it back from Brian Fletcher to the byline and couldn't get the ball across yeah it was Gerald Neal who had made his way back onto the park whatever he got into the tunnel worked um, so much so that he was able here whether or not that because yeah difficult spot for him to go through but the defender did move into his path 
It's not like he ran into the part of the defender. So I think there was a... Well, here's the kick coming in at the back post. And the walk was trying to hit it first time. Actually did. Here he is again with the dink at the back post. And Waterhouse unable to capitalize on that. I think there was a case for a call there. I mean, while he weaved his way through, you could see the movement of the defender into his path. So not like he held his position. And for me... Well, that's an ambitious ball that came out to fruition. And Hyde does well. And for me, Arnett had a case for a penalty there. Hyde didn't on that occasion. No, far from it. Brown and Arboine back to Warner Brown. Arboine, yeah, he needs to be a little bit more involved for him to be sharp. Yeah, and he hasn't had many touches of the ball so far in this game. Some players just need to be on the ball more. They need to be involved from the get-go in order to get the best out of them. Because he's a winger, you feel he, he needs that. You know, striker, the way they're made, understand the real number nine is that they're not going to be in it all the time. The wingers, though, they want to be a part of it. Here's one winger, Fletcher, trying to force a pass through. Didn't work. Thomas to Arboin. oh that's a lovely play and Thomas attacking the box sends it across Arboin. referee says play on Arboin was just on his heels there just stopped because after letting Thomas go didn't really follow up with it so that ball, bl that ball played back to him he was just a step or two behind and yeah he's I think he's Accepting that he was at fault, and you could see him just being frustrated with himself. Yeah, that cutback, you could see him, yeah, having to start. Wasn't motoring forward, expecting. Donald, I know sometimes these big games don't live up, but so far, so good for this one. Another free kick being awarded. Thomas this time. Oh, they move quickly. There was Thomas in acres of space, just a pocket of space there. That no, seemed as if... Nevada Blair. Yeah, that was actually Blair. Well, Donato Thomas was just in the 18-yard box. Waiting. Yeah, yep. for the cutback. That's what I'm, I'm saying. He was in space there to be picked out. And um, that one went wasteful. One number nine has scored. The other... Waiting for his first more opportunity. He's waiting on his first touch in the box, maybe. Yeah. Shepard. The Waterhouse player may get some attention now. Donato Thomas in some pain, it seems.
Jenny, I hear that uh, you're in the stands with company. Take it away. And I'm definitely in the stands. There is a rumble in the jungle, and I'm here with the pot cover man from Waterhouse. Talk to me about this man so far. Yeah. Okay, them draw my blood first, but they know me not give up because one love can't be me inside in the evening here because water's have a good side, a good young side me up, and I don't scare because one love can't be scared. So, any idea? I go down with 2 1. I win 2 1. A man in a sense just shout behind us before we came on camera and say you're going to get 3. No, if you can't talk, the ball is wrong. You have to understand with the ball. Mm -hmm. And the proper player me have, I don't scare. You understand? Yeah. So let's watch the game. Now we're in two one. Well, he's not scared, but I am here with the mascot for Arnett Gardens. Talk to me. You're leading in this match so far. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm going to keep the lead and try to get two or three more goals you know, going forward, you know. Because what was it? Nobody. That from over the years them beating Arnett over five times straight. Now it's my time to take that. Five times straight back to them right now. I'm going forward. Couple weeks ago, couple months ago, couple weeks ago, couple months ago, me help them. So me now watch them. Me help them when me want them. I me all look for the game tonight. A true love. A well, true love. Well, there's still a rumble in the jungle. You heard it here first. We have a bit of time to go. Donald and Dwight, let's see what happened for the rest of the match. Well, just a point of reference here that the last time Anik Gardens beat. Waterhouse, it was by a goal to nil, so technically 1 nil can beat Waterhouse. <laughs> well, he's not thinking about that, the Waterhouse supporter. He wants to cling on to anything, any hope at this stage. One thing is for sure, the Anna Garden supporter is right. Certainly have them where he wants them at the moment, trailing. Like the vibes, though. Hyde hasn't been as sharp tonight, has he? Keneal Hyde. He's allowed to be. Yeah, Fletcher's hand was involved there. Here tonight are witnessing a good encounter. That they are. Free kick to Anna Gardens. She smit the player down. Two goals so far this season for him. Looking to extend that. The player who is did went to Holy Trinity in high school, did play Manning Cup in the season of 2014-2017, but has been in the Premier League since 2016 with Boy Stone, has played for Portmore, Santos now, also at Manning Gardens. Opportunity here for Manning Gardens sent inside, it's dangerous, it's off the bar too. Warner Brown was looking for a second there. Yeah, might have felt a little bit awkwardly, but Shea Watson with that in there, and yeah, got onto the end of that one. Made a proper yeah. connection to you know. Yeah. Keeper beating all ends up and flush on the crossbar. Waterhouse in this one because the powers that be didn't allow the goal to be taller. Higher than that one. Didn't allow the goal to be higher than that because certainly that would have nestled in there. Well, he's already made a mark on this game, Warner Brown. Yeah, Shane Watson with that delivery. Fletcher there, probably asking for a little 
for preview, just Shane Watson to ease up a little bit, but good luck with that. Yeah, the fans just got a shot of the fans there. Tell you what, the Sonic Gardens club, it's probably the club with more fans or supporters outside the boundaries of their community than any other in the Jamaica Premier League. Often you go around the country and you hear, I'm a, ju I'm a junglist fan. When this place is packed, it's rocking most times. Christian. They're not allowed to run freely. Shepherd on him. Another searching ball. Blair. Couldn't find Brian. David Gilbert did say one of his main aim tonight is to try and cut off the service to Brian. So far, so good. Walker now on it. Devontae Walker. Looking for options here. Smith, Simpson, lovely, Fletcher, that was going goalwards you know, they're appealing for a handled ball, I'm not sure if the defender knew much about it. That went like a shot out of a gun. Now here is Shepard, he slips that through to Arbuine, Arbuine looking to finish, what a save by Foster, had to move smartly to his left to keep that one out. It's the second time tonight he has come up big for Waterhouse. Could have had a little more power behind it, though, I felt. Now let's see here. Did open his body up, you feel, yeah? But was just curling back towards Foster. But still had to make a big save and did parry it away from the danger zone. We'll have a second look at the shot from Fletcher. Neil finds the turf again. Good layoff from Ban. Yeah, Amos was in the way. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. That, 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 that <laughs> definitely should have been a penalty. But was the referee blocked there? Well, <laughs> I don't know well, if the producer can show it again. I didn't see. Look at the right smile. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he got away with one there. Yeah, Amos. Amos. Yeah, yeah. Definitely should have been a penalty. Here's Watson. Watson's ball inside is not a bad one at all. But the flag is up against Shea Smith. Yeah, missing that one. Was she blocked? Maybe she was blocked. Couldn't <laughs> quite see it. It did move quickly, you know. It did, but, well, the ball, not the hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a... Look, so look at her point of view. No. Let's look here. Maybe she was blocked by, by, by the, the person by taking Fletcher, the shot. By Fletcher, yeah. 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 But I don't know if the it, assistant it referee would have been able to oh, see. I, I, I doubt it. Yeah, but maybe I, I agree with you in terms of Fletcher's uh, position would have blocked referee Hamilton's view of the matter. Yep. And from the sidelines, there's no way she should have gotten help. No. Maybe with her position in the assistant wouldn't have recognized that her vision was obscured there. So while it should have been a penalty, maybe it's one that you won't mark her down too heavily. No, you can't. Well, you know, before uh, the game started, I had a little chat with... Oh, that wasn't a proper clearance at all. And the shot is taken and Foster yeah. holds on. Yeah, recovered in time. But yeah, I was saying, Marcel Gale was saying, boy, most of the games that he has seen on TV, these referees feel obliged to give penalties. 
And he, did, he wasn't sounding like he was in favor of it. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been in favor of that one, that's yes. for sure. <laughs> A little time remaining in this first half, just about five minutes. Blair looking to win it back for Waterhouse. Yellow card is shown to Devontae Walker. Been having a decent game though, Walker. Not too bad. Yeah, confirmation. Didn't think that he did much wrong. I didn't think so either. Not pleased with what he's seeing. <laughs> and he would have seen a lot of Waterhouse team over the years. Safety first, I suppose, in putting that one into touch. Ball swung inside. Clearance eventually made by Waterhouse. Brian marked out by Cunningham. Couldn't do a lot there. That one is flicked through, but too far. Too far in front of Warner Brown on that occasion. This one is nodded out wide. Smith trying to get there. Foster with the clearance, or more, it was a pass really, it was a good one. Yeah, I did well there. Blair. I tell you what, there's no doubting Shepard has been given the responsibility to track Christian all over the park. He's not left him an inch. Someone showed that at one stage Christian felt he had to lift him off the turf. <laughs> they need another point of attack, Waterhouse. And now they have to defend. And uh, Warner Brown kept his footing. And in the end, it took the shot off that got a deflection and the junglist will have a corner. Yeah, that was a good work in there. Good strength shown by Warner Brown. Elvis Wilson had to stay with him as long as possible. First, a little nudge there. Yeah, Keith Simpson yeah. with the, the push from behind. Brown Just did show his strength on that occasion. Yeah, but that shot did stabilize, destabilize him somewhat. Oh, yeah. And then Elvis did the rest. That was a corner kick for his efforts, though, as Watson has gone across to take this. Watson sends this at the back post, still in play, and that was deflected and over the top, corner kick. So we're inside stoppage time, folks. Two minutes of it to be played at least. It's good work just now from Kenny Hyde, stuck with it at the back post because it wasn't going out and it would have been comfortably won by an Arnett player. 
Yeah, he said he saw it, but it was beating him. So, yeah, he stuck with it. That's good work. It's pretty much all hands on deck for Waterhouse. There's two players left of field. Corner kick delivered. Oh, what, what, went right across the face of goal. Third consecutive corner. And the Waterhouse defenders unhappy. Yeah, Hyde leading the protest saying it wasn't it was straight off on it player. But on the other time to not budging from her decision. Now they decide to take it short. Probably just to close out final seconds. Well, that didn't work out well for Waterhouse. And the Arnegans will take their time about this one, no doubt. Maybe they won't even have enough time to do anything with it. That's the end of the first half. The one goal in it came from Arnegans, number nine, Warner Brown getting his second goal of the season yep it really was a a good finish by Warner Brown there in the 10th minute of play and with that we head to the interval with the home team in front Mona against St. George's College tomorrow, 3 o'clock, 4 ECT. The first Manny Cup semi final on Sportsmax Plus on the app and Scene TV. And right after that, Heidel going up against Kingston College, also on Sportsmax Plus and on Scene TV. On Saturday, live Da Costa Cup action, Clarendon College against Garvey Maceo. That's the first semi final, Clarendon College against Garvey Maceo and on Sunday Rainier View Jamaica Premier League action Lime Hall against Veer United at 3 30 p.m. Jamaica time 4 30 in the Eastern Caribbean and then right after that we'll see Dunby Holden facing off with Malines United at 6 p.m. 7 in the Eastern Caribbean so let's take a look at what has happened so far in match week six at Dunby Holden 2-1 over Lime Hall Harbour View Form United 1-1 Cavalier defeating Veer United by three goals to one today. Humberline left it late to beat Montague Bay United by three goals to two. Mount Pleasant got by Tivoli Gardens at the Stadium East Complex by a goal to nil. And of course, earlier today, Treasure Beach with a 2-1 win over Malines United. Island Gardens presently leading Waterhouse by a goal to nil. Waterhouse, they are getting ready to make a change the Devontae Walker is off for Waterhouse Dante Duncan comes on to replace him Andre Smith comes off as well 
We'll confirm in a little while who has replaced Andre Smith. Shamar Booth. There he is. Changing up a few things. Marcel Gale. Well, Levante Walker did get a yellow card late in that first half, so based on the rule in the middle there. We just want to ensure that he keeps 11 on the park. Second half on the way here. Waterhouse desperately trying to get back into this. Haven't been sharp in this game. And they're looking to turn the tide of this one. I guess for the most part, that sharpness has lot their offer has been a res due to the result of them not being able to find Devante a Javon rather. Oh, this one slips through, but the flag is up for offside against Warner Brown. Haven't been able to find Javon Bryan with the regularity or even at all. They didn't have a single shot, Javon. They didn't have a single shot on target in that first half. Mm -hmm. But for the neutral and myself would be happy to see Javon in the game at some point. Here's Waterhouse. Simpson. Booth getting his first touch. Wonder if any of those changes will help. Well, we'll see the evidence shortly. I mean, certainly those. Got a hat-trick in the last game. Javain, so... Hopefully he gets on the score sheet for the Waterhouse fans and players' sake. Thomas. Christian. Here there, Waterhouse coming forward. Looking to get the ball inside the area. Dante Duncan wasn't accurate with it. Trying to find a way, scratching the head there. Marcel Gale just trying to figure how does he get his big number nine and leading goal scorer involved Javain in this game. Yeah, yeah he did make a good run just now off camera. Talk about the five previous meeting where on the gardens they have defeated Waterhouse four rather and they did do so in pre-season not official so maybe that's why I'm getting my five but yeah Christian with the delivery here that's lovely and the whistle went against Keneal Hyde maybe inside the area Eugene Williams is in the house, no doubt supporting Anna Gardens. Definitely was coaching Charlie Smith. Water showing a little bit more intent in the second half. Well, pretty much the way they started the first. Yeah. <laughs> Until Eric Edwards went down to change his <laughs> boots. In fact, if you repeated it several times, I think you, you think that was deliberate to no, stem was, the tide. It was genius, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Water was again, Duncan on it. And there's a late challenge on him. Here they are again.
They've been doing well at the back. Arnett Gardens today. And for the first 45 minutes, restricted Waterhouse to zero shots on target. And limiting them to just three attempts all told. Christian was just harassed <laughs> all the time. <laughs> just look at Shepard there again. I think he did get a did he get a yellow card in that first half? No. No, I don't think he did. No. And he's done well to stay clear of oh, it. Oh lovely first touch by Fletcher. Couldn't get by Amos though. Who decided to do the long jump in the sand pit over well behind the byline. Sean Amos. In the meantime, there's a corner kick to be had. Christian going across to take it. Looking for a very good delivery here, Waterhouse. Six players committed. Christian's ball inside at the near post. A little disappointing. He'll try again. And there's another big challenge coming in from Amos. Oh, just got a touch in the head. Fletcher trying to evade the challenge and probably just see if it's the knee here. Yeah. Yeah, couldn't do nothing about it. He's all right, though. Rashawn Amos, he's been involved in quite a few incidents. Yeah. And a big one was penalty shout. That no one really saw at the first, at the first glance, except like maybe one Fletcher. Waterhouse player. I think Fletcher was <laughs> furious in his, in his appeal. Hacked out of the area by Martin. Wilson settles it finally. Foster opting for the cross field delivery, finding Fletcher. Now it's with Blair. And Blair goes goal. Words, this could be a little terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Edwards side all the way though. Probably more so for us than Edwards. He seemed to be calm with all of that. I'm guessing the bright orange outfit. Can't be missed, but what a host haven't had a chance to to go in his direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> they've missed him. <laughs> they've missed the entire frame as well. Well, that's a huge kick. Hyde is back there under little pressure until now. Shares the pressure with Wilson. Wilson gives up possession. And Darboine is on it. And just a little nudge. Right on the borderline of illegality there, I, <laughs> I, I reckon. But nothing doing, it's a goal kick. And he didn't get up an appeal either, so he felt he, he also agreed that it was within the ambit of the law. Long ball, hoping to find Fletcher. Neil was in the way. Martin slips it through to Shepard. Waterhouse, they get it back. Trying to get Brian involved, but he's marked closely by Cunningham. Lovely turn from Thomas challenge coming in hard on him but clean I think but to be all ball my initial view of it Warner Brown didn't like it he just went away from him a little 
got ball, but touch high, but got ball. Not comfortable yet for him. Reminded to download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. And to keep in touch with all the happenings on your hope of champions. All the happenings, including the Rare Nevy Jamaica Premier League. And of course, we have the big Manning Cup semi finals on tomorrow from Sabina Park. Watching it exclusively on Sportsmax Plus, which is on the app. You don't want to miss that. And it is free on Sportsmax Plus. Once you download the app, you can watch the games free. On it. Looking for a second here. Shepard. Shea Smith was attacking that one, didn't need to. Shepard goes into the referee's book now. Fletcher goes down. And the referee is going to have a conversation with the assistant referee, I believe. He's calling her over. And maybe Neil is in some trouble here. That's the initial yellow card. And that's happened right in front of our videographer. Fletcher needs some attention. And, and I'm not sure if Neil is in some trouble here. Would be in big trouble because he got a yellow in the first. That would have been stupid of him. Because if that's the case, on it, we'll have to see this one out with 10 players. And you can see that the rest of the players are around him just saying, what craziness have you done there? Well, the conversation is now being had between referee and assistant referee. So a decision is going to be made shortly. Did the assistant referee see that? Yeah, Archer, the assistant referee. Oh, he is in trouble. Yep, yep. Second yellow card for Gerald Neal, yep, and yep. he is off. I don't think he can have much complaint about that. What we saw in the replay. Letting his team down here. And if they were to lose two or all three points, then it's not the first time since the start of the game that he's going to have to make the walk to the tunnel. Did go there in the first half after an injury, but got good treatment to come back. I dare say there's no coming back for him from this walk. Todd Shepard would have gotten a yellow card from a challenge on Christian at some point. That's not the player which his challenge, the challenge that he executed that caused the yellow card. But he has been good on Christian all game and he resumed his duties of marking Christian while Neil trod slowly across. Could just quell the attacking impetus from Arnett Gardens. So often we've seen teams with 10 players. Fletcher goes goalwards. <laughs> Edwards had to watch it all the way. We go on to win it. But it might not be a, a big change for um, Arnett Gardens. Uh, and I've played a system like this before 4 3 3, going down a player, you go to 4 3 2. Because you're used to three in the middle already. The problem is that you'd have a, a player tracking back to protect your flank. All you'd ask your front two to do is to shift across ball side. And that one player on that ball side as your, one of your attackers could just go back. No, I, I'd actually bring on Evans. I wouldn't be surprised if Evans comes on shortly. I think a change... He was the one that was, you know, lined up when Neil was suspected of not being able to continue. 
So that could happen as well. And you know, one of their players would have to be sacrificed. Yeah. And you could see that happening because they're leading this one. Exactly. If they were behind, then that scenario, would I which I suggested, would be one that you would expect to, to take place. But with them leading, then he may want to go to just one up top. Yeah, Arboin has been asked to do a little bit more defensively on the right-hand side, but, yeah, the change is going to be made. Yeah, I see it. Yep. It's, it's the most sensible thing yep. to do. The fact that you're leading. Some persons would say, though, with... The question is, who is going to be taken out? Is it going to be Arboin himself? Looking for a goal, you probably go that route as the best means of defence. As they say, it's attack, but... David Gilbert looking to go... Another Ruth. You're thinking it's going to be a white player who, who will come off, right? Yeah, do you feel so? Um, Here's Blair. Warner Brown has been good, so you'd want that focal point still. Thomas. Was robbed of the ball here. And it goes the other way for Javain Bryan to run on the ball inside from Duncan repelled by Arnett Gardens and it is going to be Shea Smith yeah it is one of the wingers probably not the one I expected he's coming off a double in the last game against Montego Bay United but he's the one being sacrificed here but hasn't really gotten into this game a whole lot So Evans comes on for Shea Smith. All right, and the solution it. gets into the thick of things, or will do so shortly. Waterhouse, seeing an opportunity here. Can they deliver? Well, they are forced to do some defending now. Here's a run from Martin. I don't think he beat the outside trap, you know. Foster, however, did, does well. Yeah, he didn't beat the outside trap. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the archer did signal. Well, eventually. Yeah. Kemar Foster probably complained, well, I could have avoided being pushed, sir. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know the Thomas there apologizing to Fletcher because that should have been a drop pass out to Fletcher. Miscued the pass. And second apology going Fletcher's way. Well, Waterhouse, they need inspiration and with them having a man advantage isn't inspiring enough. As we see Evans going down. Yeah, I said he got hit in the face by Fletcher. Look out, Donald. I thought that ball was coming for you to chest it down. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't have been a chest down, that's for sure. <laughs> the temperature is rising yeah over this game yeah i don't think that was purposely done there I, I think that was a little cheeky as well yeah yeah that one was i think What else? Through Fletcher. Nevada Blair swinging this one inside. First time effort is wide of the mark coming in from Shamar Booth. Still no shot on target. saw some good quality play in that first half and I think both sets of players just need to calm down and get back to this plane 
a bit more of what we saw in that first half. Got a lot riding on the line here. And she's glued to the action. Well, we think it's the action. <laughs> Who will inspire them? Waterhouse, as they try to get back in this game. Simpson. Wilson further across to Duncan. Arne Gardens have done well to block the crosses coming into the box. They really defended well. The likes of Amos and Cunningham, yeah, in the middle. Christian to deliver. Here comes the corner kick, and it was over Brian's head. Cunningham will see it out. you feel Waterhouse haven't really fired or been able to find their marksman. And Javine Brown is the work being done on Christian as well. Oh, lovely stuff. As they come striding forward once more. Martin continuing his run. Warner Brown on it. Can't fire them home. But it goes straight to Foster. Yeah, there were other players feeling that Warner Brown was going to pick them out, but a striker no, has just scored. I don't blame him goal. one yeah, bit, actually. Yeah. He's always going to go for it. But good run from Martin. Started the play. And mind you, he's the player expected to build the attack, defend, and give the platform for the attackers. He was very much a part of that attack. Arboine wasted. Yeah, when he's not involved in the yeah. play, it's it's an off day for him. Yeah, four goals so far this season. That is 14 career goal. Jaheem Thomas going wide. Does really well. Gets a return from Brown. And Thomas's effort is high and wide. Yeah, so with 10 players on it, and I remind you, yes, with 10 players on it, the last two attacks in this game has been them. And that just emphasizes pretty much how Waterhouse has been blunt in the attacking because it's on it playing with 10, but looking the more likely to score and extend your lead. Could get by Evans and now Arne Garden charging forward and Arboine Evans lost it Arboine trying to win it back by any means necessary didn't quite work out for him Javain Bryan along that channel ball played inside Thomas was he cut down he was by Shane Watson and the yellow card is shown it was critical that he did that there it was but Dante Duncan was screaming for it on the far side acres and acres of space and no red and black shirt in sight just wanted that one to be played over to him just look here when that turn comes yeah just looking for yeah, he was facing the direction of Duncan. 
probably would have been a better option, but free kick given, but not quite sure what will come of it. Yeah, just to confirm, the yellow card shown to Shane Watson. And now Waterhouse will have a free kick with 20 minutes to go. Will their moment of magic come? And of course, the score from this, they are going to register their first shot on target. Yeah. So who is behind this? It's Fletcher, it's Christian, it's Simpson. Four-man wall constructed, the captain a part of it. It is Christian, it's over the top. It was always going to be him or Simpson based on the angle. been allowed to roam free today Christian Fletcher was really smart there. Duncan. Duncan does really well. It's his final product that seems to be also disappointing after doing good work initially. Just on the cost of you saying Duncan did so well, then came that pass. <laughs> God, he couldn't give you some rest there, Donald. Just give you a break there. But yeah. A lot to be desired off of that final pass or attempt at a pass. Always speaking about players making two consecutively good plays. Yeah. He, he thought it ran away for him a moment there and then did well to get past the defender. And just too much excitement there. Not even sure what he was thinking. Was it a shot that he was trying it, from it, the, the angle? The way that he hit that one, it looked like that, but that was very, very, very ambitious. Here is again Duncan. There's the cross inside the box. There's a knockdown to Fletcher. Fletcher needs some help. Will get the corner kick. That was our point there. Torting Fletcher's advances. What that header needed from Thomas was a was more central. Needed a player to be central. And everybody coaching no far in gardens, I guess, based on the color of that cap, yeah. Here's the corner kick. It's a good one, punched up by Edwards. Booth tried to hit it on the volley. Almost did his knee in. And Edwards will eat up a few more seconds here. <laughs> Has been good tonight in terms of taking the sting out of the game and Waterhouse, every time they seem to want to change a gear. Consultation there. Waterhouse technical team. What's next? Trying to figure how to unlock this on it gardens puzzle. That's been a lack of creativity, I think. Yeah. And as I said before. Well, here's an opportunity for Arnett Gardens and the end result is a goal kick to Waterhouse. So we're saying Shepard's work on Christian has been good, very, very good to say the least. 
So I'm sure Waterhouse would have come into this game thinking Christian would have been a creator. Amos banging that one into touch. that will come on Smith on the Smith maybe Booth was a little bit too casual on it oh this is a lovely run by Warner Brown wonderful stuff and the execution of the pass was good too Thomas was fouled in the process by Booth it's a free kick to Annette Gardens a really good Attacking transitional play there from Arnett Gardens. Broke with speed and precision in the passing. Warner Brown just did what I was harping about before. Putting two brilliant plays together. Yeah. He's a quality player. He did say many years ago at the boys' class. Yeah, the schoolboy football level, one yeah. of the best finishers I have seen. Yeah. Just injury prevented him scoring more. Here's Chef, Chef Evans, though, dear. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, that was wasted to say the least. Arne Gardens in transition. Jamon Shepard striding forward now. Running into space. Holding off the challenge until he couldn't. And the game feeling a little stretched now. And Ricardo Thomas, he hasn't been involved in a while. Javain Bryan had to come collect that one fairly deep. Christian and after that run from Shepard the speed Simpson with the dink inside the area too much on it would that count as a shot on target <laughs> no, <laughs> no to go. my goodness <laughs> Trying to <help> the most. <laughs> no but I was saying uh, off camera after uh, making that penetrative run there Shepard the speed with which he got back to get beside Christian I mean, this is a discipline performance from him a play is done for Anna Gans in the meantime and uh, they are about to make a change Warner Brown's time is up land a wing having made the difference so far in this one <laughs> Philando wing it looks like it's because of the injury why he's coming out he's just hobbling off hobbling off the park <laughs> But a threat throughout from the start of this one. And look at his goal again. Lovely take. The defender he felt could have done better with that header coming over. But once he got in front of him, there was no chance that he was going to allow him to recover. And Elvis Wilson just had to watch the number nine going up further and further away from him. I think they may just play Arboyne as a false nine. Hyde is now coming off. They are going attacking Waterhouse. Ron D. Smith comes on in place of Hyde. Nevada player on it. And this is Simpson. They have about 10 minutes to go, plus time added for stoppages.
inside the jungle, you'd think that an equalizer would be enough for Waterhouse here. Duncan. That's a delightful ball inside. And Brian's effort goes skywards. Yeah, I just wouldn't fall for him. And because I can't say he's even feeding off scraps because not even that was co has, been, has come his way throughout this 80 minutes or so. To snap at that one hurriedly. Didn't show the calmness with which he would have executed his six goals so far this season. But still time for a striker. They just need a moment. It's whether or not Waterhouse can provide him that moment. Phil Underwing getting his first touch. Yeah, it's hard boy now who's become the point person. Farnet. This with all the running back that he has done, that switch makes sense in terms of just getting him up top there and getting fresher legs to do the tracking back. Yeah. With the expectancy that Waterhouse will go half a letter to get the equalizer. Lovely take. Thomas gets through. Thomas trying to move away from Christian here. Throw into Waterhouse. Janae is in the stands. What's happening, Janae? Theo, what's going on? Well, as you can see, Everybody here, water supporter. I am an, an only Arnie Garden supporter. Imposter. Everybody around here, sir. Over this side of water stands. A lie. Over this is Arnie. Yeah, I'm the right, just so. Call them, I'm a friend. I'm here to watch them. I'm here to beat and teach them. All right. Ten man. What's in the cup? No, I'm all a lie. <laughs> Okay, well, Arnett is leading this man so far. Talk to me. You seem like you're a long-time Arnett supporter. Correct. That's correct. From 1993. <laughs> and did you, did you play football at any time? You know what I'm like it, but guess what? You're Too much touch. politics. I'm a can't the politics. Oh, politics. Mm -hmm. Politics. <laughs> so, well. so, that's how I go on with it. All right, well, at the rate at which the match is going right now, mm -hmm. when Arnett leaves this match, if they do win, because you know it's football they the ball around. Don't get it cut. They will win this match. Remember, it's what I was playing, you know? <laughs> Remember, it's what, what I was playing. Beat the stick. Beat and teach. So we are beat and teach them. The ball. Well, it's beat and teach here. From fear, quote unquote, Donald and Dwight, back to you. Let's see if that actually happens. <laughs> It's, up. it's yeah. happening now. I don't know if he's talking alone or it's three of them, himself, uh, Ray and Nevio as well. <laughs> Roshane Thompson comes on for Jaheem Thomas. One of two changes being made. Kimani Arbwan is making an exit as well. Brief stint as the central focal point comes to an end. Wasn't so much involved in the first half. Second half, it's pretty much about doing a lot of defensive work and tracking back for his team. Would have put in a shift. Leonardo Gibson comes on the park. Leonardo 
And uh, he comes on for Andre Fletcher here. Jibison. Yeah, Fletcher not able to add to his two goals so far this season. And with this win, if it were to stay this way, Arnett would leap from fifth in the table to second. Passing Waterhouse. So, a double jeopardy here. Winning on the night and going ahead of them. That would be the case for this man's team. Big win it would be. Duncan. Desperately trying to make a difference. And it's really and truly not his night so far. <laughs> Since he's come on as a sub. And even his own supporters on his back too. With uh, the lack of end product. Still time. Cunningham did well there. This one is played in the path of Shepard. Significantly as well. If it's Hose, Waterhouse wouldn't just go down to third, they would drop to fourth. On goal difference below Portmore. Mm. This is both these two teams' sixth game of the season. One less than league leaders, Mount Pleasant. Free kick to Waterhouse. Can they change all that permutation? I just mentioned no about the positioning and goal difference and all of that. A player is down and uh, he'll get some attention now from off the bench. As we take a look at the sports max that moment of the game and it's the difference in this match so far. Warner Brown breaking free from Wilson and company. And uh, what a finish there. Cool, calm, and composed under pressure. And uh, getting by in the process. And that's the Sports Max app moment of the game. Courtesy of the Sports Max app. Yeah, and the more you look at that replay there, you see that Wilson will be disappointed with that header. Was more heading it down, which is why it hit into Warner Brown rather than heading it up. Probably just needed a head up and then get a second bite at it. Uh, poor defensive header. Uh, Warner Brown was not too concerned about that. All on his mind was to score the goal, which he did. And at this point, seems Here's to be an opportunity winner. for Arnett Gardens here as they head to the byline, and that one is crashed into the side netting. Philander wing with the attempt there. It'll be interesting to see how much time will be added on as Duncan sends this one inside. It's Brian closed down so quickly. He didn't have a chance there to turn and shoot. Yeah, one of the few times that he has gotten free, but that first touch could have been crisper. If it were, then he would have been able to let fly. Well, another opportunity here. Gibson keeps it alive for his team. Blair deflected and behind for a corner kick to Waterhouse. But again, give them credit, Harnett Gardens. They closed him down pretty quickly. 
once they once he gave them the opportunity with that slightly off touch we're expecting seven minutes of stoppages to be played and that's a lot of time for this man's team to get back in it and Barnett Gardens probably too much Blair takes it quickly Christian's ball inside put behind for another corner kick Corner kick again inside. Ooh, there's an appeal for a handled ball, nothing doing there. And uh, a little bit too eager to get the ball back, Jibison. Free kick to Arnett Gardens. They get some reprieve here. The Waterhouse did have a case for a penalty in the first half. Not quite sure on that occasion just now. Mally Cockings come on for Elvis Wilson. Five changes now for Waterhouse. Nothing doing yet in terms of breaking this very stubborn Arnett Gardens defense. And ten men now a part of that defensive unit. Here they come again, Waltaus. Oh, the turn is wonderful. The finish, not, not as much. Well, that's because there was some last minute or last this defending there from the skipper. Took a deflection. Yeah, he really lunged in there. Had to get it right because it was inside of the penalty box. But just look here. Really good defending. Yeah, just mm. in the end there. And Cunningham has put in a really good shift here. Well, I think he's probably the leading contender for player of the game. Yeah, along with Shepard. But yeah, he might be edging it. Especially if it stays this way and Waterhouse don't register on target. Quarter kick coming in at the back post. It's headed on target. Held on by Edwards. It was Cockings, you know. Was it on target or just or wide at the post? We'll see. We'll leave that to starts person to decide let's just look here mm. it was it was collecting that one low i think that was just sneaking inside but there wasn't a lot of power behind it duncan again Mm. But the play has been called back for a free kick to Waterhouse. The yellow card is going to be shown, actually. To and a second, the second yellow card yeah. to Shepard. <laughs> well, added Gardens, they're losing players by the minute almost. That, that's a second red card being shown to one of their players. First, Gerald Neal Jr. and now, Jamon Shepard. Yeah, always going to be a, a, a yellow card. That's a, a promising attack being stopped there. That's a spa moment and referee Hamilton, being a FIFA referee, was not going to miss that. But there you see a pat on the back because for Xavier Gilbert, he knew that one was for the team because it was a good ball through, maybe running away anyway. So, but maybe from his angry team, it was a good one. Duncan's delivery. Oh, it's wasted. What? There are six, seven Waterhouse players not giving them inside a the box, waiting on the end of that one. And Duncan just hasn't been making the right decision since he's been on the park. Wow.
Waterhouse, they just have a, a couple minutes remaining against the nine men of Arnett Gardens. And what's happening here? Oh, this is crazy now. <laughs> Third red card for Arnett Gardens. Shane Watson being sent off now. And at this rate, it will be difficult <laughs> to find a starting lineup for their next game. Well, I guess it's default action for, for Gilbert. He pats again on the back. He just wants to get over the line. Then he will deal with all the anger, or let out all the anger on these players for the decision made in getting these red cards. Well, what else again? Was there a handleball outside the box? Well, a corner kick has been awarded. Or is it a free kick? I think it's a corner kick that's been awarded. Nope. Yeah, it's it is a free yeah. kick outside the box. Yeah, and, and it's obvious, isn't it? Like, yeah, you yeah. can't argue with any no, of them. No, not at all. You cannot not argue with all. any of them. No. And Marshall Gill was off the races, going to please case to the fourth official. And here's the corner kick coming in. They're headed away. Evans was in the way. They're literally outnumbering them, but it doesn't matter. They hold on in the end. Incredible scenes here. At Arnett Gardens, they hold on to the victory despite getting three red cards. And would you believe it, Warner Brown, his goal in the first half proving to be the difference. And Cunningham with a, a big performance at the back, even when his defenders were just leaving him one by one. And I'm sure they'll deal with the indiscipline afterwards, but right now they'll accept the three points. And it's a big, big win on home soil against the Marcel Gale team that didn't look sharp at all. Didn't look as if they were off to the races at all. Even with the uh, numerical advantage that they had, nothing. But for Arne Gardens, it was everything. And they come away with the 1-0 win in the end. Let's take a look at the full-time highlights of this Thursday night fixture. And this was an effort that was blocked at Waterhouse. Well, they did some work in that first half. But then, against the run of play, Arne Gardens took the lead in the 10th minute. Warner Brown with a wonderful finish. Arne Gardens number nine just picked up on the mistake from Wilson and it was steady for him and it guns with the advantage he really liked it then Smith falling over went through to Arboine and then picked up inside by Jaheim Thomas who tried to toe poke it past Kemar Foster who got the better of him with the outstretched leg. And then this one delivered inside off the bar. Warner Brown with the header. That cannoned off the woodwork. That would have put Arne Gardens 2-0 up. And then this effort, bang on target. Amos's hand was out. <laughs> and the referee didn't spot it. And an opportunity here for Warner. His shot was charged down. He had a decent game, you know, the striker. Playing a wonderful roll through the middle. 
but then chaos. Second yellow card after being advised by her assistant referee Audrey Thomason showing Gerald Neal Jr. a second yellow, which means that he was off for an early shower and a confrontation with the gate. Warner Brown having to support, deciding to go himself straight to Foster. And then this one sent inside and nodded down by Malik Cockings. And then Jamon Shepard with the pullback there. And he picked up his second yellow card. And he was sent off too. There was to be one more. Of course. Shane Watson given his marching orders. Petulant. And uh, still, Waterhouse couldn't get by. Arne Gans with a big win in the end. Arne Gans with 11 shots, five of which were on target. Waterhouse were yet to register a shot on target. Arne committed 13 fouls and had the red cards to prove it as well as six yellow cards wow what a game that was Waterhouse with 11 corner kicks Anagans with just two Waterhouse with 55 percent of the possession but even after all of that they just couldn't come away with the win uh joel a really good performance from you a captain's performance from you you limited a waterhouse well they had, didn't have a shot on target uh, talk me through your performance today. Well, I think it was a good performance for me and also from the entire team. I think we came out here to make a statement. We considered six goals in the last three games. I really wanted a clean sheet today. We got it with the win. I mean, I, I saw that um, even that leading goal scorer in the league, Brian, I mean, there, there was a plan for him. Every time he got the ball, the few moments that he got it, you were all quick to close him down. So it was not just you being involved, but the instruction and the leadership from you. I mean, you talk about your entire team being good. You must be disappointed, though, that you ended the game just with eight players on the park. Yeah, definitely disappointed. I know. And looking forward to the next game, we know it'll be short handed. So it's really disappointing. But we're glad to show the character to finish off the game and get the three points today. So we we'll look forward to the next game by preparing. Finally, second in the table now with this win. What does that mean for Arnett Gardens and their season? Well, it means we have a little farm going. So we have two wins straight now. Looking forward to the next game on Sunday against Cavaliers. And we'll take it one game at a time. Well, a, a, a big performance from you, a captain performance from you. Good luck in the Thank rest you. of your encounters. Thank you very much. Do you have it, Joel Cunningham, our man of the match? Uh, really it did well today. He did a number on this man's team. There were nine shots from your team. And you didn't register a shot on target. I mean, talk to me about your attacking display today. Um, it's a little bit dismal, but I mean, such is the nature of the game. I mean, it's a hard, hard, hard felt one. I thought we deserve even a point today. Even though you say we don't have a shot on target, but you know, you know, we make a, a, a mistake today, it cost us again. Yeah, I think you're talking about that defensive header that fell to Warner Brown when he went on and finished. But I know you were upset. I could see you on camera a lot of times with the fourth official. Um, what do you have to say about the officiating today? <laughs> I mean, um, Three, three red cards in that game, I, I, it's been a while I, I see that, but um, the referee know what they're doing. And so, you know, we, we won't find any excuse, so we have to come again. Take a and you were on a good run, but your nemesis seemed to be the Sarnet Gardens team. Four uh, defeats before this one, this one now five. I mean, why is it that you can't get over this hurdle with this Sarnet Gardens team? Just time. I mean, sometimes you have a bogey, and you know, um, the odds, the greater you lose, the greater chance to win the next one. So. We'll see the next one. Well, Coach, tough luck tonight. All the best. Yeah. Well, thanks. yeah. So, uh, Coach Gale there. I uh, don't want to say much about the officiating tonight, but this man team, uh, yes, it's a season for giving. And let me start there. Lots of card issues. I mean, six yellow cards brandish resulting in three red cards. I mean, yes, you didn't show much disgust with your players coming off, but what do you make of that? Um, it's, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. Um, 
I mean, they side, you know, a little bit different. I think uh, probably one or two of them are a little bit harsh, you know. Well, I wouldn't say all of them didn't deserve it, but, I mean, and, it, and it's tough, you know. I mean, we went down to eight players. Yes. You can just imagine, you know. But um, credit to the, to, to, the, to, the, to the guys, I mean, they, they, they did well. Um, and we, we secured the three points, and that's all that matters right now. It's very important. This, these three points are very important for us. Um, it moves us up the table a little bit and um, over to um, Wardo. So um, I'm happy that we won a tough game. Um, it's now recover and, and get back to business. You say a little bit up the table, you're now in second. But I have to say, when teams lose, coaches get a lot of stick. have to give you credit today. You did a number on Christian in the middle of the park. Shepard, before he came off, was just there or there, but was always there with, 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 with Christian. Didn't allow him to play, but even with uh, their striker, Brian, every time he got it, the few times that he got it, you closed him down. Um, master stroke from you today. I mean, that was the plan, you know, to try and, 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 and um, curtail the strength, um, the, the supply going forward, as I mean, as I, I spoke before. And whenever, if and when Brian gets it, he's under pressure. You know, we, did, we didn't want to, we know lethal is and he's on form. And we just didn't want to give him any, any opportunity or any sniff at goal, you know, and that was, that was the plan. I think we executed um, well to that. I, I think, I, I thought we, 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 we slowed their rhythm. You know, um, based on, on how we set up and, and some of the things that we did. And I have to lift my hats after them. Well, kudos to you and your team, coach. All the best. Well, man, thanks. Yeah. So as we take a look at the full results here, Dunby Holden 2-1 over Lime Hall, Harbourview and Former United 1-1. Cavalier with a 3-1 win over Beer United today. Humble line beating Montague Bay United by the odd goal in five. Mount Pleasant edging Tivoli Gardens 1-0. Treasure Beach with a 2-1 victory over Malines United and Arne Gardens pipping Waterhouse by a goal to nil at the very end there. Arne Gardens have now moved up to second spot on 11 points. They have played a game more than Mount Pleasant who are a perfect five from five on 15 points. Portmore third on 10, same as a Waterhouse and to the Gardens and Cavalier running out of the top six. Limehall and Malines United still at the foot of the table looking for their first win of the campaign. Lots to look forward to on the home of champions as we go back to schoolboy football action. And it's a big one. The Manning Cup semi-final. The first one, Mona High against St. George's College. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. ECT. We're live from Savannah Park. It's going to be on Sports Max Plus and on Scene TV. So, too, the second semi final, Heidel High up against the famed Purples from North Street, Kingston College, 5 15 p.m., 6 15 in the Eastern Caribbean. And of course, the Costa Cup action. This is massive, you know. It's a real Clarendon derby. Clarendon College against Garvey Maceo, Saturday at 3 o'clock, 4 ECT. We're going to be live from Glen Muir. And the JPL, the Jamaica Premier League, sponsored by Ray Nevy, continues on Sportsmax on Sunday. Lime Hall will go up against Real United at 3.30 p.m., 4.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. And right after that, Dunby behold and Lions United will do battle at 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 7 in the Eastern Caribbean. And that's just a snippet of what we have in store for you for the upcoming week. But Anne Gardens with a 1-0 win over Wardhouse. It's a big result. They move up to second in the standings in the Rain Navy Jamaica Premier League. On behalf of uh, the hard-working production team here, director Jason Sawyers, a producer, Ramon Stewart, my co-commentator, uh, Dwight Jeremiah. And uh, yeah, as I said, the hard-working team, including Janae, who was in the stands. I'm Donald Oliver, signing out for the final time from the community of Anne Gardens and the Tony Spalding Sports Complex.